Hello co-creator, Lidu here. This is another of my soul uh, sessions and today it's on relationship and I have as a guest uh, Gay Henriks. He was the, on the Oprah show with his uh, wife. I have been creating an amazing uh, love empire, many many books, bestsellers, have transformed thousands of people's lives. And I'm here today to ask him uh, on how to create long-lasting relationships, uh, issues with singles, and how we can uh, co-create some amazing, long-lasting, beautiful, fulfilling relationships. So it's an honor to introduce you to Gay Henriks. Good afternoon, uh, Gay Hendrix. It's a pleasure to be interviewing you today on soulmates and lasting relationship and creating genuine love in our life. It's it's. Thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Great being with you. So tell me, you are one of the top top speakers out there with your wife Kathleen about creating lasting relationships. Do you actually believe in soulmates? And what is well, it? I. I want to, I've been asked that many times and I'd like to tell you the way I look at soulmates that I think um, one of the greatest quotations I ever came across was from the novelist Tom Robbins and he said instead of looking for a perfect lover out there look for the perfect love inside yourself and open up and feel as perfect a love as you can make for yourself and my experience was that when I did that finally after trying everything else I could possibly think of during my 20s and early 30s when I finally did that when I finally just loved myself the way I was suddenly I found the one you know that it happened a month later um, and I've never known for sure whether whether to call that a soulmate or or what it, it, it's you know, like, because I think one of the problems I have with soulmates is the idea of maybe people think there's just this one person out there and they have to kind of keep looking and looking and looking and looking and looking until they find that person. But I want to just say that the way I think it works is you kind of look for that perfect person inside yourself and when you finally realize there isn't anybody, there's just you the way you are and when you remember to love and honor that part of yourself, that imperfect part of yourself, then I think it frees you to find a person that also loves themselves at that level. And then you come together and the relationship becomes about being in a space of unconditional love together. So I just want to, yeah, when we use the word soulmate, that. I just want to make sure that people aren't thinking of pursuing something out there that some idealized perfection out there in the world and they've got to keep uh, still looking for it. Mm, so, so you're saying once you align yourself, you love yourself unconditionally, then potentially right there, the right person that has that that is there for you out there can show up, kind of in a miraculous way. I heard. I mean, some people say right away when they've seen that person, they fell in love. They knew it was the one. Was it your case? What? How old were you when you met Kathleen? Um, when I met Kathleen. Um, we call her Katie here around the house too, so you're welcome to call her Katie. Um, it's a little bit easier to pronounce than Kathleen. Uh, <laughs> even Oprah Winfrey uh, mispronounced Kathleen's name a couple of times when we were on her show the first time. Um, so um, one of the things that happened for me was that a month before I met Katie, I had kind of a crisis in myself where I realized that every relationship problem I'd ever encountered in my teens and my twenties was always because either I didn't tell the truth about something or the, the other person didn't tell me the truth about something so there was some kind of dishonesty in the relationship and also every time I'd encountered a relationship problem there was always blame involved where one or the other of us would start blaming the other one for the way things are and then, of course, when somebody blames you, as you well know, usually you don't just say, yeah, you know, it is all my fault. So you usually kind of blame the other person back, and it gets into this cycle of blame. And I realized that that had happened every time that I'd ever had a relationship conflict, even going back to the first time I was 
you know, had my high school girlfriend when I was 17 years old. And um, so I was 33 or 34, 34, I guess, when I finally met Katie. And what had happened the month before is I had this kind of crisis where I realized, wow, there's always dishonesty and there's always blame. So I want to create a relationship where both people are willing to be honest and both people are willing to take responsibility for things when they come up rather than blaming. Mm. And I added a third important thing too, which was that I wanted a relationship where both people were really committed to their creativity because I'd had relationships in the past where mm. if one person was out of touch with their creativity, they would blame the other person and, and vice versa. And so there would be this kind of battle around not expressing creativity. And so I wanted a relationship where both people were equally committed to a relationship where both of them could be creative instead of one of them being the creative one and the other one being the support person. And um, so I placed that order, so to speak, with the universe. I kind of put this prayer out. I said, okay, here's what I really want. Honesty, no blame, in other words, taking responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I wanted a relationship where both people are committed to their creativity. And I said to the universe in my prayer, I said, if it's not in the cards for me to have that kind of relationship, okay, I'm happy to be alone. I'm willing to be alone. But I promise you, I will never, ever settle for less. Mm -hmm. And so I, um, I just basically said that to, to the quiet room I was in. And then I forgot about it. And then the next month, I met Katie. And uh, in my first conversation with her, I said those things. I said, you know, I, I'm very attracted to you, and I'd love to ask you out for a cup of coffee, but I really want to let you know that I only want relationships where both people are honest and both people are committed to taking responsibility and both people are committed to their creativity. And so on those terms, would you like to go have a cup of coffee with me? Oh. And thankfully, she said yes, because now 30 years later, we're still uh, having a wonderful life together. And uh, so um, when I first met her, there was something special about her. I could see, you know, I'm not one to say I see auras, like colorful auras and things, but there was some kind of a glow mm -hmm. around her that let me know that this was a person who really knew something about love and had experienced real love. Mm. And so I felt like this was a person that even if we were different on the surface, and we were very different, you know, I was a university professor at the time and she was a dance movement therapist. And so we kind of lived in two different worlds. Um, but our worlds came together very beautifully. After we got together, we decided to make our lives about teaching people how to have conscious relationships. Mm, but before we get in there, how you, you, there was actually a need though. You were at a place where you were totally at peace with who you are and loving yourself unconditionally. Yet there was some kind of void there because you ask for something. So how do you deal with that? That that wanting to share that love, that wanting to to find it, but yet being comfortable with being on your own. I think a lot of us uh, singles are battling with that. So do you have any recommendation? That's a great question. I appreciate the way you asked that because, see, I think it, it shouldn't be an either or. I think that, see, a lot of people think you either plan and do visualization or you just kind of take life as it comes at you. Yeah. But why not do both? Why not go ahead and work on learning to love yourself and loving yourself deeply and unconditionally and also put out some plans or visualizations or affirmations about how you'd like things to be because you know think about it in terms of uh, ordering uh, breakfast in a restaurant it's much better to order your breakfast in a state of loving acceptance because then when you eat it your body's going to digest it and you're going to enjoy it a great deal more mm -hmm. whereas if you said to the waiter or waitress all right just bring me some pancakes and be quick about it you know, if you were kind of like ordered it that way, um, then what would happen is that you'd probably get back that same kind of, um, you know, kind of a uh, dismissive sort of response from the um, from the person on the other end. Mm 